Okay, this tutorial is for using Zoom through an iPad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share and hopefully um, you'll be able to see everything that's on my iPad screen. All right, so now Hopefully you are seeing my iPad screen. I am going to find the Zoom app that looks like this um, blue video camera. It's a free download. If you go to the web store, I believe it's called Zoom for Cloud, and that's what you want to download. So this is the first thing that you should see when you click join a meeting. From here, if I would happen to know that ID number, the room meeting ID number, I could just click join a meeting. I wouldn't have to sign in. I could just join, I could type in that number right here, or if I use the down arrow, I can see the different meeting I room, rooms I've been and join that way. But, I am going to cancel that. And I want to be in my personal account, so I am going to sign in. So I click the sign in down here. I am signing in with Google because the account I use is a Google account. If it is not a Google account, then I would have to put my email in up here and my password. But I'm just gonna go down here and sign in with Google, yes. Let it access my Google accounts, choose the correct one. And then I'm signed in. And I know I'm signed in because my picture shows up here. And um, I know that was part of how, um, how do we get that there? And we'll, we'll get to that point. So now this is my home screen on my iPad. Different ways I can do different things. This looks very much like it does on the computer. So I can start a meeting. If I do this, my computer um, or my iPad will start into a meeting just like we're in and we would have some audio issues echoing because the two are so close. So I'm not going to do that. If I click join, it would just be like we had done before. Now I'm joining as me. So right here where um, it has my name, that's the name I've given my account. So if I didn't put a name in, when we get to settings, you'll want to put your name in there so that they know who is joining the meeting. If I want to schedule um, from my iPad, I can schedule meetings out. So I click on that. Same thing. I can type what my meeting is called. This is going to be, um, if I'm wanting to somehow identify a student in the meeting heading um, or a parent meeting or something probably would use initials. So I'm going to say this is M B's oops um, math meeting. All right. So then, um, do I want it to start today at noon? Sure, or whenever I want it to. I can do my duration however long. Um, if I want it to repeat, I believe on the computer it says a reoccurring. This is repeat. So right now it's on never, but I can have it do every day, every week, every two weeks, every month, every year. Um, so if I picked, if I wanted to do it every week, then it would go on my calendar for every week. So then I um, can choose the, or when, if I want it to end, like, May 1st, I can put that date in there too, or it could go on forever. Um, calendar, I want this to go to, in this case, it was my I calendar. Um, in my settings, I choose that. This has was set up quite a while ago. I'd probably choose my Google calendar now. And then this one says, use my personal ID. I would um, advise you to not use your personal ID if you are in the SPED privacy group, unless you're just meeting with another SPED teacher. Um, just, it just adds a little bit more um, privacy if that number is generated each time. 
And I believe yours is set that there is a required password and you can't change that if you are in the SPED privacy group. If you're not, that's an option. You can require a password or not require a password. The next two, I always have um, host video and participant video on, especially if you're working with kids or someone who's not familiar with Zoom. If that video comes on right away, that's one less thing they have to try and figure out how to turn on. And then um, under advanced options, there is um, enable the waiting room. If you are in the SPED privacy group, you might wanna do that. All that does is when someone joins your meeting, they actually can't come in until you start the meeting and then you click on their name to allow them to come in. A great form of privacy. If you have meetings back to back, you might wanna have the waiting room so someone can't jump into another person's meeting or same with students, that's up to you. Um, allow to join before host. Once again, if that's the case, um, someone could jump into a meeting you're having with someone else, or they could be on there ch chatting if you've got multiple people before you ever get on there. So if you don't want them to join before you, if they do join, there's just a message that says the host, host has not joined yet. Please um, wait until they do. Um, I don't do the automatic record meeting. I'm not sure where that recording goes to, so, and you might not even have that setting. So I'm done, that's gonna schedule. It's going um, to my calendar, uh, my sports calendar of all things. I can just go in there and change that. Maybe I want that to go to, that's my Google calendar. I can send invites from here, but I typically um, just send the invite through email. So here is that invite right here. Um, oops, right up here. So a couple things I can do. I can copy that um, here and um, that's opening Zoom. I don't want to do that. Cancel. Um, I'm trying to copy. All right, so let's, let's just not, let's get it somewhere else. There's a better way. So I'm adding that to my calendar. There's a better, better place to copy that. Um, so that's been scheduled. I don't ever use this <clears throat> screen share or share screen. I share once I'm already in the meeting. So that's how I use that. I'm gonna move this, I don't need to move it. Okay, over here. Here is um, a toolbar along the side here. This, we're on the home screen now. Chats, um, if someone, if you've connected with someone else's account, you could chat back and forth. Uh, I don't worry about that. The other, only other thing over here is meetings. So if I click on meetings, it's gonna show you the meetings I have scheduled. So this is the one I just scheduled. Um, at 10 o'clock today, I had the seventh grade science um, and this NB math meeting is reoccurring. So up here, I could just start it. Um, well, actually, this, this one is my personal ID. And if I wanted to just start a, a Zoom with someone or um, my own Zoom room, I could do that. But I want to get the invite for, if I'm sending them to my personal Zoom room, I would send the invitation here. Um, I can send as a message, send as an email, or I could copy that invite to my clipboard, and then I could go into my email and paste it there. I also want to um, show you what it's like for this NB math meeting. So I'm gonna click on that, and it's reoccurring, it tells me all this. Um, I can start it or I can add invitees. So let's click on that. And I'm gonna copy that message to my clipboard um, or I could send as a message or an email. If I send it as an email, you'll see what it looks like. All right, so then I would put that student's name or if it's an invite to a meeting, I would put the parent's name up there. Um, and I'm inviting you to this meeting. It's a reoccurring meeting. Um, well, actually it says anytime. I probably should, um, have clicked once a week if that's the case. This is that link that they need to click on. And here's the meeting word and the password. 
So you need to make sure they have all of that. Um, you could send all of this or you could just like copy, copy that this much from the, the topic, join meeting through the password. If you have a parent calling in on a cell phone, then I would just give them one of these two numbers. So if I was actually in my email, I would delete one of these numbers. All right, let's see if I can, oh, I don't wanna delete it all. I'll try again. Come on. Well, my iPad um, skills are not as good as they should be. But also down here, so this would be if they were dialing in from a landline. Once again, I would just give them one number. And it doesn't matter, San Jose, Houston, New York, they're all fine. Um, they'll all get you to the same place. But they do, if they dial in from a home phone number, they do have to still put in that meeting ID. This join by SIP and H323, all that kind of stuff, you could delete all of that. That's is it was if you have a DL cart or like you're at the school and you're calling from the DL room, so you won't be doing that. So I would delete that um, and then you could send it on. So you can edit that however you like. I am going to delete that and come back. Um, oh, that was that edit. Remember I had said that it repeated um, or it was at any time. I would probably go in and change that. So there's your home page. That's what it looks like. So now, if there's a little echoing, I apologize. I'm going to try and actually go into a Zoom so you can um, see what that's like. I'll turn that volume down. So I'm going to start a meeting here. My video um, is going to be on. I'm going to start that meeting. All right, so that ding means someone arrived. Um, and I'm calling in from the same account on two devices, so it's going to kind of mess things up a little bit. I'm going to shut off my video on my iPad. Just uses so much bandwidth. All right, um, let's just say okay and see what it does here. So I, um, I did not join with the iPad audio because my computer and my iPad are so close, I would have had um, a lot of um, feedback. So I'm gonna say that I, you can see it's already still not really clear. My bandwidth thing is an issue. Um, but if I want to share content, I can do that right up here, this little sign that says share content. If I click that, um, maybe I wanna share my whole screen. Maybe I have something in my photos I wanna share or Dropbox or my Google Drive. We'll just show a photo for now. Um, there is this adorable little guy here. That's my grandson, Trip. And um, so I've shared, and we're talking about Trip, and you're all telling me how adorable he is, and I would have to agree with you. And then I'm done. Now it's showing my participants. And um, there's two of me in the meeting, but I'm the host. I have the availability to mute other people if I want. I would just click on the microphone and mute it of those other people. I could mute all. Um, the host does not become muted when you mute all. I can also down here start a chat. Um, and that's also up in this more over here. Let's see if it comes up. So I could um, clap, give a thumbs up, or I could start a chat. And then the chat box comes up. And I would could just put in my question or say, hello, welcome to my class. And then that would show up there. Chat's a great feature. I'm gonna close it. 
I have it open several times on here. Um, also down here is a pencil. So I can choose that and annotate. I just, up oh, here it comes. We'll use the pen. All right, see? Um, so I can annotate on my iPad and it shows up on the other screen too. Um, I don't know what else is on here that I would want to show you. So I think I'm going to actually leave this meeting. Um, oh, that's much better. I don't know why I was having all that color issues and stuff. Hmm. All right, leave meeting. There it is. Leave the meeting. Once again, I'm back to the home screen. Um, I should have erased this or taken my little green circle off. Um, but over here, we want to talk about settings. All right, so one thing I can check, it says licensed. That's good. Um, that's what I want it to say. Um, if I don't have a picture here, I think that might be in general. Let's check. Nope. Um, maybe about, oh, that's my version. Oh, ha. if I just click on it, there's my profile photo. If I click over here again, I can use the camera to take a new photo. I could select a new one and put it in there or whatever I want to do. This is the name that's displayed. So if you didn't have your name on there or you don't like, if it says Molly Ashoff, I want it to say Miss Ashoff, I would just go here and change that. Um, a personal note, I could put a welcome or something if I wanted. Um, and then um, since it's a paid, if you are on a, um, if you're a SPED teacher and you have a pro or a licensed account, you can change your personal meeting ID. But if you're on a basic account, if this said basic, you are not allowed to change that. All right, within meetings, let's see if there's anything here that we need to set. Um, sync to my calendar here it's disabled on mine but i would want to do that to my integrated google calendar and there is the virtual background if you want to play with that that would be great i don't that's up to you <laughs> i'm not going to spend time on that okay so um here's that chat feature um and an in-app alert sound if someone sends a chat you can have that on or off and then the general and eh, nothing there so you should be set with your settings there um, if there were other settings that we looked at um, if you were part of the sped privacy basics on the computer um, they're probably already set in the background. You just won't see those. If you have any questions or need some more help, please just contact me and I am happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one.